sexy jobs number. I want to bring in Paul Conway, former Labor Department Chief of Staff. Paul, 211,000. The real unemployment rate continues to decline. I say that's a pretty good job support. I think it's a great jobs report. I think it's a strong report in the terrain on which it's landing. I mean, you have uh, good, high-paying jobs being created, and the terrain on which this is landing is uh, greater confidence among manufacturers, the highest rate in 10 years. You have growing consumer confidence. And the other thing is, in this report, you see the trend line continuing of those folks that are 25 to 54 years old, men and women without a college degree, re-entering the workforce. And that's the, probably the most important thing, is you have people being picked up off the sidelines and coming back into the economy. Now, some of that, of course, is because they're getting jobs in those areas, right? For instance, mining was up uh, in this report uh, 9,000. That's impressive for mining. In fact, up 44,000 since October. Construction is coming back. Manufacturing jobs are coming back. And these are the jobs in the heartland, Paul. Isn't this what the election was all about? Yeah, this is exactly what the election was about. When you go back and take a look at who cast through ballot, I think it had less to do with Republican and Democrat than those who felt as though the American promise had become out of reach and the thing between them and aspiration was the federal government and Barack Obama. And to his credit, uh, Barack Obama had a very aggressive agenda and he implemented it, but I think what Americans said is, that's not the direction we want to go in. We want to go back to work. That's what the president committed to. And I think what you're seeing today is a good trend line. We need to get the policies in place and the tax policies and the professionals in place of the president to make certain that we have the capacity to execute on what he's committed on. Right. And of course, though, the Dems are not on board. In fact, they're spinning it. Uh, Nancy Pelosi putting out a statement that reads, April's jobs report shows the economy continues moving forward. However, Neither the economy nor American families can afford the devastating health costs increase of Trump care. Well, it's Trump care. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Paul, with respect to what we saw coming out of the House and ultimately what the law may look like and its impact on the economy? Look, let me give you two perspectives here. Uh, one as a policy professional and the second as a kidney transplant patient that's worked for 36 years to fight kidney disease. I'm 20 years out on a kidney transplant, Charles. And here's the practical issue of this. If you talk to employers, especially small business owners, they'll tell you that the ACA, even the Federal Reserve will tell you that the ACA had a wet blanket effect on the economy and the growth, especially for small business trying to hire people. You're removing the penalties, which is good. You're removing the penalties that people had on HSAs and FSAs, being able to use those to purchase over-the-counter drugs. But just as importantly, for patients that are out there, uh, people like me, um, if you want to be in control of your health care, what you want to do is you want the relationship with you and your doctor. You don't want somebody like Jonathan Gruber or Nancy Pelosi telling you what you can and can't do. And I think we're out of the first arena, which is the House, about to enter the set, second arena in the Senate to try to create some policy here which is better for Americans and drive their own health care. That's the number one thing here, and I think employers will pay attention to it and see it as a positive thing. All right, 36 years with a uh, kidney transplant. God bless you, Paul. Really appreciate your Thank time you. and your expertise this morning. You bet. All right, guys.